All right, man, peace. So now this is part two to the uh, John McEnroe versus the sports mother goddess <laughs> video. The last video we did, the John McEnroe sit down at the CBS Morning News where he got put on the grill. They basically tried to get him to kowtow. He reticently did at the very end. You know, but like I said, he's a drug burnout. Eventually he was going to because plus he's trying to sell a book. He doesn't want it to have his book sales get sabotaged. So now we're going to check some of these uh, sports roundtable discussions and see how they cover the issue. All right, hello and welcome. We're joined today by Super Bowl champion Eric Davis and the founder of the big league, Jason McIntyre. Let's start with Serena Williams, who is set to grace the cover of Vanity Fair this month, just days after John McEnroe stirred up some controversy by saying Serena would be the 700 ranked player on the men's tennis circuit. Serena... Now what in the hell is that? Is that <laughs> is that Serena Williams or is that Bing Rams from Holiday Heart? One of you brothers help me out. What the hell is that she got on her damn head? Serena responded yesterday, tweeted at Macaron quote, Dear John, I adore and respect you, but please, please, please keep me out of your statements that are not factually based. I've never played anyone right there, nor do I have time. Respect me and my privacy as I'm trying to have a baby. Good day, sir. <laughs> she said, I don't have time to play anyone ranked there. So she's too, she's, in other words, she's too high to play a ranked male tennis player, according to her. McEnroe, not surprisingly, refused to back down from his comments this morning. Would you like to apologize? Uh, No. Um, but no, I, 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 the offer is this, is because it seems in tennis, unlike other sports, that they're always asking about how women, they always ask me how I would do for someone. Why is this old bag, John McEnroe, how would he do against Serena? Why don't you combine, just solve the problem? I'm sure the men would be all for this. The men and women play together. And then we don't have to guess. All right, tell her, what's your reaction to McEnroe here? Well, I think the word, the number 700 is the story. If he had said 7th, 70th, but when you say 700, it's like, whoa, that is, that, that, it's a number. If Don would have said, well, yeah, top men are better than top women, we wouldn't have a story today. Yes, you would. You still have a story today. That's nonsense. The, uh, the liberal female syndicate who are basically, they've been mobilized by the uh, international bankers for those of you who don't know, the, the feminist movement was subsidized by the international bankers. I think I might have covered this already. They want the woman in the workplace so that they can get the income tax from both her and men. Okay? Having women in the, having women in the workplace, it, it lowers the value of the worker because now you have a larger worker pool to choose from. Therefore, you, you can afford to pay people less money and have them work more hours. Because they're more desperate to keep their job and they're more expendable. It also takes the woman out of the home and it allows the child to be raised by the television or a foreign party, i.e. a babysitter, who is not as considerate of the child, not as loving to the child. The child, therefore, does not have as good a bond with the mother or father, which means less respect for the mother or father. It means less respect for the, uh, for the paradigm of, of uh, husband and wife from the children, which makes them more likely to grow up and, you know, just have a bunch of quote unquote bastard children. All right. And to and to totally disrespect any form of real relationship. All these things have trickle down effects. And it's very important when you want to destabilize society. Like I said, the international bankers, they want to have communism, socialism, you know, communism slash socialism. Why? That eradicates the so-called middle class and it makes it easier for them to take your money because while you're busy trying to be equal to everybody, you're getting taxed out of the backside. That was one of the that was one of the main tenets of Marxism was a graduated income tax, the eradication of private property, the eradication of class. All right. Now, everybody's the same class, which means at the bottom. All right. This this is this is what leads to the mindset of unnecessary confrontation between men and women and i see it a lot even on my little 
YouTube page, I see every once in a while one of these women will try to chime in and say, oh, I think you're a misogynist. Look, I'm not going to argue with any females. None. I don't waste my time. All right. If <laughs> I say this all the time, if you're not, if I didn't come out of your vagina or I'm not going into your vagina, I don't give two shits about what you think. All right. You don't like it. Oh, well, it is what it is. You put that 700, it sounds like an insult. And I also thought it was a lousy question by the reporter, who is a non-sports reporter. She is a great journalist who covered the Middle East. They put her in a sports question. And she goes, why qualify it? Well, because we qualify sports. There's men's scholarships, there's women's scholarships. There's men's leagues, there's women's leagues. Sports is qualified before I get to talk about it. Everything is qualified. Not just sports. Everything is qualified. It's called having to earn your keep, but you cannot have that in this day and time because the feminist movement is based off of entitlement. Like I said, I blame this on the Caucasian man. He was supposed to nip this shit in the bud when it first started happening. Instead, he glorifies people like Susan B. Anthony and and uh, Helen Keller and a lot of these other even a lot of you so-called black men, Harriet Tubman and these women, these women were more feminist than they were into race. All right. Harry Tubman was a major, major figure for the feminist movement in the latter part of the 1800s. All right. And allegedly a lesbian. But that's neither here nor there. That's a whole other issue. But like I said, you so-called black men, too. Angela Davis. All right. Supposedly Miss Pro Black. She went and had a child with a white man. She became a lesbian. But, you know, you, a lot of you men are just dumb, to be quite honest with you. And, hey, if the shoe fits word, if you offended by that, it's probably because, you know, you're one of the people that I'm talking about. All right. A lot of you, a lot of you cats are just silly, especially a lot of you brothers. All right. Y'all, y'all allow this shit to happen. Like I said, you glorify this manly, this manly looking damn, uh, uh <laughs> this, this manly looking wildebeest with a wig on a damn head. Like I said, looking like Ving Rhames. Talking about uh, Serena Williams is, is fine. No, she's not. The, the, the woman looked like hell. All right. The broad looked like Rick Mahorn. Get the hell out of here. All sports is qualified. There's a men's tee in golf. There's a woman's tee. They qualify it. So I thought it was a reporter who asked a question. John should have asked, hey, could, what are you getting at? What are, you, what are you stating? And then when he threw the number 700 out, that sounds like a shot at Serena, who is wildly popular and an amazing athlete, and now you got a controversy. Well, I wouldn't say that she's as popular as she is venerated by the media. I think that a lot of her popularity is based off of the left-wing liberal media promoting her and pushing her. All right, She's very, very popular amongst black females. Why is that? Because the so-called black female, they have her set up as a... As a uh, you know, they have her put on a pedestal. They have her set up as a model, as an idol for them to mimic. Like I said, she's very, very... She falls in line with the modern-day liberal black female mindset. Of globalist, racialist, feminist, right? Sleeps around with different men of various races. Likes to get on the social media and talk about race as if she actually cares, which she doesn't. And then uh, she's a mega feminist. That's the condition of the battle. So she fits in perfectly with this society. That's what that's what makes her a great, great role model, right? Which is code word for idol. Uh, this is not a controversy at all. Not even a little bit. Oh, uh, this is a product of social media. Agreed. And I know that for a fact because there's a lot of so-called internet revolutionaries that come on my page. That's why I constantly have to t tell them that this is not a pro-black page. See, what pro-blacks like to do is they like to talk a lot of shit that they have no intention on doing. They like to come on the internet and talk a bunch of bullshit that they have no intention on doing. They try to act revolutionary when they're not. Right? Most of these so-called revolutionaries, all you got to do is ask them a question. They have no plan. They have no thought process. They're low-level thinkers. And the reason why they're so upset is because they're mad at themselves for being cowards. They don't have the courage to actually do what their, what their platform is. They try to embarrass other people into accepting their platform as opposed to being 100% for their own platform. All right. Majority of them are cowards. They never want uh, they never want to examine 
the real issues on a deep level, on a three-dimensional level. Instead, they just want to blame the so-called Caucasian for everything to hide the fact that they want the Caucasian man to give him a hug. All right? And I'm going to show that in some of these videos when I do the responding to your comment series. All right? A lot of these comments from the, a lot of these pro-blacks, all it does is show you how low self-esteem they have and how much they want the white man to give him a hug. This is why I said, once again, when you notice Gail going back and forth with uh, John McEnroe more than Nora O'Donnell, why is that? Because she she holds the Caucasian man in higher esteem even than the white woman does. All right. The Caucasian woman gets her power from the Caucasian man, but she's not as in awe of him as the so-called black woman is. All right. The so-called black woman takes a compliment from a white man as being worth more than from a so-called black man. And she also takes an insult from the so-called white man as being more hurtful than from a so-called black man. All right. Everything is about power. This is why I talk about culture and the money system. And you got these simple ass pro-black dudes that want to go on and on and on about about the race war. Shit, shit that, they, that they're never going to start. All right. You're never going to start it because you're a coward. I don't care how many how much you talk about. You got your gun under your bed, all that bullshit. All right. Just knock it off. For this even being remotely in controversy it proves our addiction to twitter and how stupid twitter makes us what john mackerel said is completely obvious uh serena williams has been quoted saying how easily she'd be smoked by the tops men's players yes that was back when she wasn't um breathing in her own fumes all right that was that was just a few years ago but she acknowledged that already you know when i was a child when i when i was in school elementary school uh, my sixth grade teacher, he used, he used to call us twits. Right, a twit is like a, you know, like a, like a silly person. There's a reason why they have it, Twitter. All right, because because it's mostly for twits. And beyond that, the emblem of Twitter is the bluebird, which is a mind control symbol. That's really what it's for. It's just for people to come on there and put each other under that groupthink propaganda programming. All right, to get everybody to think the same way, which is no way. He was not in any way, in my view, trying to be insulting. I agree with that. But we have set up, through social media, this deal where there are certain special people who anything, you can't even come close to criticizing them or social media melts down. Well, that's because, once again, the um, these black men, so-called black men, particularly a lot of these pro-black brothers, they worship Serena Williams because she has a fat ass. All right. It don't matter how you look. Uh, you could look like Reggie White. If you got a pair of titties and a fat ass, the, the so-called black man on, uh, on the Internet will say, oh, man, you know, the face ain't all that. But look at that ass, son. I still hit. <laughs> and most of these liberal black women, their self-esteem is so low. They're so desperate for attention. Um, they're, they're just happy to see Serena Williams on television and in the spotlight and able to get inseminated by a Caucasian man. And Serena Williams, I don't understand why she's responding to this. I don't understand why she's acting like she's been violated. For the same reason why she responded to that old tennis player who talked about how her child would look like chocolate milk. Because an insult from a Caucasian man is held in higher esteem by the liberal black woman. I already said that. I said that the last when I made that last series about her when she got mad at the old the old time tennis player, whatever that man, uh, Illy Nastasi, whatever the hell his name is. That's why she went off on him on social media, because it means so much to her when a Caucasian man says something about her, either good or bad. Like I've said before, the so-called pro blacks, they worship the Caucasian man and woman. Yes, they do. All right. The tinfoil hat blacks, they worship the tinfoil hat whites. The liberal blacks, they worship the liberal whites. And most so-called blacks in general, they worship most so-called whites in general. They want a hug, they want attention, and they want love from them like a dog does. Right? A dog acts up until you pet it on the head. That's what's called having a slave mentality. And somehow this interferes with her having a baby. Uh, this whole thing of playing a victim over anything that gets said, is, is a joke and preposterous. It's unhealthy. Uh, he didn't say anything in, inappropriate. Some, or of it's just, some of it is science. Yeah. I don't think science is sexist. There is a reason. The four 
Well, science can be duplicitous. That's that's a whole other topic. Science can be duplicitous, but um, in this case, no. The forefathers of sports have separated men and women. We didn't do it. We're just commentators. You played, but there is a... Well, no, actually, what separated man and woman was the most high. All right? The most high separated man and women, not the forefathers of sports. What the forefathers of sports did, which is their job, is to try to make everything an even playing field to make it competitive. You must separate men and women so that people are interested in watching. If a man was competing against women, nobody would watch because the, the outcome would not be in doubt. All right? The person who separated men and women is the most high when he created us differently. And for different purposes. Well, there's a reason that largely women haven't played in the NFL. Well, Ronda Rousey beat Conor McGregor. I mean, or we have. <laughs> not a Ronda Rousey can't even beat both of the, most of the women on the damn MMA circuit, All right? How did she build her name up? She built her name up by disrespecting Floyd Mayweather and talking about how she could beat him and all the angry liberal black women who were upset that Mayweather has multiple women and is honest about it. They jumped on the bandwagon and said, "Yeah, I hope that she can." At least most of the liberal black females on ESPN, right? And the mass media in general, they were pro Ronda Rousey beating up Floyd Mayweather, even though, even though they knew that fight would never, was never going to happen. Now, they lambasted Floyd Mayweather for allegedly being a woman beater, but they were trying to hype a match between Ronda Rousey and Floyd Mayweather. Why is that? Because they knew that Ronda Rousey was in a no-lose situation in that dynamic, all right? They know, number one, Floyd is hamstrung. He cannot hit the woman, according to the tenets of this society, because if he does, he's a quote-unquote coward. And if he gets, you know, and if he just stands there and allows himself to get emasculated verbally or physically by Ronda Rousey, then they get to project that delusion of female superiority. Right? It's a perfect, it's, it's basically, it's a perfect form of promotion, which is why Dana White utilized it. So I, uh, Ronda Rousey, yeah, right? That, no, no, I, I get what you're saying. I don't think, well, number one, I don't think that I'm with you. I don't think he was trying to be insulting. He was being an analyst. And I don't, so he shouldn't apologize for his opinion as an analyst. I mean, he's, he's a qualified person. He played the game. He watches the game. He watches the men. And he didn't just play the game. He dominated the game, right? Even though he was on steroids, he dominated the game. He has a right to say that she'd be ranked 700. Men and the women. So when asked the question... He said, this is how I, I, I would see it. Everybody's saying, why did he say that? Well, why isn't anybody asking the interviewer, why is she concerned with trying to have Serena Williams projected as the greatest tennis player of all time? Unless, unless you're trying to start a confrontation uh, with men in regards to who would beat who. That's his job. That's what he does. That's right. what we all know McEnroe for, uh, for right now. Uh, as far as Serena Williams uh, snapping back, I don't have a problem with that either. It, because she didn't get into it saying you're wrong and it shouldn't happen this way. Actually, she did say it. She said that it's not factually based because she's never played anybody there and put there in quotes, which is to try to imply that she actually could beat them. And she already knows that she can't. Or and I would be I would beat this person or that person. She just basically said, guys, pump your brakes right now. I'm not even on the circuit. I'm trying to have a baby. Just I don't need and to make do some I don't have motion. I don't have to make anything. I don't have to make but I don't have to make headlines. Reporter, you know what I'm I don't have to make headlines on on that. But but also you know, no, Serena Serena presents herself as this strong woman allegedly that you know girls follow and and you can accomplish things and you can do all of these things and I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I think she's a great example for my, my daughter, my 21-year-old daughter. So her doing those type things, I don't have an issue with it. I don't think she was upset, uh, as, many, as everyone believes her to be. As you said, she's already stated that she knows that she couldn't uh, beat some of these top guys. Of course guys. she did. She couldn't beat any of them. She couldn't beat any of the top guys. She couldn't beat any of the top seven or 800 guys. All right? And that's the bottom line of it. And she knows that. She knows. Yeah. This is, Whitlock's 100% right. This is a social media thing. If we don't like what people say on social media, we hit the block button. You know, the young millennials, they can't handle the truth. Not to steal a line from Jack Nicholson, but... Sometimes, sometimes you do have to block people, though. Uh, because some of these people out here are degenerates. All right? Sometimes people do have to get blocked. And it's not about disagreement. It's about degeneracy. You know, sometimes people get off. I call them YouTube hoes. All right. They go on 40 or 50 videos and they and they have and they cursing and carrying on and they hate every video. 
or they jumping from video to video. That's a demon. You got you to gotta make sure that you keep negative spirits out of your life. A lot of these people are, are, are demonic and they got to be blocked off. They don't like being hearing anything negative. Oh, really? That's bad. Apologize to that person. Why? He didn't say anything. I just I don't understand why they can't handle the truth right now. Of course, he has to apologize because he has to emasculate himself. Once again, there's a difference between disagreement, which is based in intelligence, empirical data, rationale, logic, and somebody who's being a demon. Now, if John McEnroe was going on every show unprompted saying Serena Williams is, is incompetent, she's terrible, she's this, she's that, you know, she needs to be eradicated, then that's one thing. He needs to be reprimanded heavily. But to be asked a question and answer honestly and have proof and have uh, verification, justification in the statements, uh, a real platform to make them and to be castigated like that. No, that's just uh, well, that's really just the Caucasian man reaping what he's sown because he's allowed these women to run wild. And now he has to deal with the consequences right now. And, and this is nothing negative whatsoever. It's like. The real world is harsh, and this is reality. John McEnroe but this, is right. But this story came out yesterday. I text you, you know, and I do that once a week. I said, oh, this will be a controversy. And you said, what's controversial? And I was thinking, nothing, but this is 2017, where this now is controversial, where sports have been, have been legislated to separate men and women. We have done that due to fairness. Exactly. Fairness due to physiological differences. So what McEnroe, and by the way, the 701st rated men's tennis player has seven singles titles and played in the Davis Cup. He beats Serena too. It's okay. He's a really good player. He's a tremendous, I played golf with a PGA, an LPGA pro. I played golf with a PGA pro. They're different sports. But Colin, what? you follow women's soccer closely. Yeah. You know that the U.S. women's national team scrimmaged a 15 and under team this year and lost to them. Got crushed by them. News was out there. It's, it's not a shot against the women's national soccer team. It's like you said, science. But guys, don't get it twisted. Serena would beat some of these guys. And she's... Here comes the black simp. Here comes the, here comes the woman worshiping black simp. She, she would beat guys rate higher than 700. Reason being, she's been in that arena. There are some guys that haven't been in that arena. They haven't been, a, they haven't been in Arthur Ashe with all of those people bearing down on them with that pressure on them in those type, types of circumstances. Now, he's already on record as saying that he that he likes Serena Williams as an idol for his daughter. All right. So you already know the um, the standpoint that he's coming from. Really, he's supposed to say that he wants his wife to be an idol for his daughter. All right. But like I said, a lot of so-called black men are confederate in their own demise. Uh, I wonder if if this was an all female panel. Would a black female stand up for a black male athlete who was with a Caucasian woman and say that she wanted her son to be like him? Things that make you go, hmm. Circumstances, and that comes into play as well. So I, this is, we're taking this way too deep, as, as I said. I don't know if it's I, us, though, Eric. And I do know you have a lot of insight into tennis, and I believe maybe Serena would occasionally be. Who knows? The 200th best player. Who, who knows? Who cares? But on a consistent overall basis... What John McElroy is talking about isn't a, isn't a shot at Serena. No, She's I agree. She's still the greatest accomplished tennis player we perhaps have ever, ever seen. seen. And she's one of the most accomplished um, single sport athletes of the last 20 years. Look, you have to give her her credit for her successes on the, on the tennis court. But, you know, all these things have to be qualified based on gender. That's just fact. But, you know, that's the... That's the elephant in the room. But those things have to be tackled and addressed when media people, liberal media people overstep their bounds and try to act like those divisions don't exist. If you, do, if you want a woman to be declared the greatest tennis player of all time, no problem. Have her play the number one tennis player in the world on the men's side and we could find out what's what. And also, I believe last year made more than every NFL player except Peyton Manning in endorsements. She's not only great, she's appreciated. A exactly exactly beyond appreciated she's venerated she's venerated they've gone out of their way to overly venerate her as the uh mother goddess of the sports industry i've said that over and over odd odd infinitum now odd nauseum almost all right they're venerating her for being 
right? Everything is just about the veneration of the mother goddess image. And she is bought into it hook, line, and sinker because she has low self-esteem, believe me, and a lot of mental problems. No doubt about that. Most likely due to what was done to her during her childhood, during the transition, <laughs> allegedly. Companies appreciate her, give her millions for their products. So it's not like she's underappreciated. Well, you know, the narrative is that the narrative is that, um, you know, she's not appreciated because she's a dark skinned woman and people are intimidated by her. You know, the same bullshit that a lot of liberal black females spew uh, to try to justify or explain why people a lot of times are tuning them out. But Serena Williams is not getting tuned out. She's getting tuned in. She's getting overly uh, she's getting overly ex uh, Allegedly impregnated her. I mean, that dude is nowhere to be found. If he was a so-called black man, they'd call him a deadbeat dad. They say, why wasn't he at the photo shoot for Vanity Fair with Serena to support her? Where was he at? Maybe he's maybe he's uh, getting the finishing touches on his transition surgery over to a man. Allegedly, who knows? You know, but it's just amazing to me, man. The uh, the things that they make stories that are non-stories, and it's really just to break down the psyche of manhood in America. Companies appreciate her, give her millions for their products. So it's not like she's underappreciated. Well, she can never be underappreciated in, here in this society because, let's be for real, they need to court the so-called black female onto, onto the liberal side to cause more dissension in the so-called black community. It's essential. As I've said, the female period in Western society is a pawn. And the black female is a is a humongous pawn. Right. It's very, very necessary to point out the black female and bring her over to the side of the, of the liberals, because that's how you keep the uh, home fractured and tattered. That's how you keep her her mindset on being contentious with the so-called black man. Why do you need that? Because that allows children to grow up in broken homes, not learning anything, not learning a culture, which pushes them towards the prison industrial complex and other degenerative mentalities. Right. Everything has a trickle down effect. Everything affects everything else. All right. But uh, let's see what else they have to say about this issue. All right. So now we're going to continue on with this uh, conversation about John McEnroe and his statements pertaining to Serena Williams. We're going to see what Colin Cowherd has to say on his uh, on his show alongside his co-host, Christine. He raped me, Leahy. Let's see what he has to say. Let me start with this. We both worked in local TV. Yeah. Let me start with this. We both, Christine and I, worked in local TV. And uh, when you're a sports person in local TV, um, the news reporters on the news desk often toss to you. And they do that small talk, and they don't really know sports. And you're kind of uncomfortable. They say things, and you have to kind of correct them on the air. It was always the worst part of local news, is that a majority of news people don't really know sports lexicon rules legislation they don't know the sports culture right you know colin is trying to make an excuse for the female who asked john McEnroe the question about why serena williams is just the greatest female tennis player and not the greatest tennis player period he's assuming that it's due to lack of knowledge it's not due to lack of knowledge i'm sure that the woman is probably most likely not knowledgeable about the sport but it's more due to her trying to uh perpetuate her delusion on John McEnroe and trying to see if he could qualify his statement without saying something that could be misconstrued as being offensive. All right. That's what they do. They set up landmines for you to walk through. And it depends on how apologetic or unapologetic you are as to whether or not you'll be able to walk through the minefield and not care. Sure. And so they tossed you and they give you the happy talk and you're always like, oh, brother, it's just the worst. So, um, Yesterday, John McEnroe got a lot of heat for being honest, never being mean-spirited, for being authentic, never being callous, for telling the truth and being wholly accurate. Well, that was his crime, was being truthful. Uh, males in America and in Western civilization have to understand is that unless you are at an elite level, as far as financially is concerned, um, most of these females view you as being like a child, like they, like they have to instruct you, 
right? Like they really believe that. They they earnestly and honestly believe that they're worthy of instructing men on life and and how you should look at things, what your what your perspective should be. At the same time, as they go to psychiatrists and psychologists once, twice, three times a week for their mental issues, as they pop antidepressant pills and uh, watch TV shows that are meant to cater to and reinforce their whore programming and their self-hate and their hatred for uh, their gender. And yet they always want to teach somebody, particularly men, how they should view things. He would know. He's, in my opinion, as good a tennis player, along with Roger Federer, I've ever seen in my life. So he is on NPR. And he is being interviewed on NPR about Serena Williams. And here's the interview from the reporter who I can't believe knows sports. Let's talk about Serena Williams. You say she is the best female player in the world, in the book. Best female player ever, no question. See, not only did he take the statement that the reporter initially made and, and, and ratcheted it up to give her ultimate respect. Um, I mean, he did it unprompted. The reporter said that she's the best player in the world. He said that she's the best female player of all time. Uh, some wouldn't qualify it. Uh, some would say she's the best player in the world. Why qualify it? Oh, oh, she's not, you mean the best player in the world, period? Yeah, best tennis player in the world. You know, why, why say female player? Well, because if she was a, if she played the men's circuit, she'd be like 700 in the world. Um, no, she wouldn't. The 701st player is Dmitry Tarsanov. He beat her s easily. He yeah. has seven singles titles. Was part of the 2006 Davis Cup. Say what you were going to say, Colin. Say that man will whoop her ass. All right? That's what you were going to say before you stop yourself. All right? I don't care how many how many performance enhancing drugs she's on. I don't care how many uh, how many hormones she took to transition over. Allegedly, she's not competing with him. He wins tournaments against other men. This is not a shot. You do understand that Serena Williams joked about this on David Letterman and has no problem years ago when her friend Andy Murray, a top men's player, and her used to joke around about playing. Yeah, and this is a very important soundbite, but I'm sure that her and Andy Murray did a lot more than joke around because uh, she used to throw herself at all the white boys on the tennis tour. Well, let's see what she has to say. Remember, as he said in, the, in his preamble, this was her years ago. This was before the fumes, before she started breathing in her own fumes about being the mother goddess of the sports world. For me, tennis and men's tennis and women's tennis are completely almost two separate sports. So, I'm like, if I were to play Andy Murray, I would lose 6-0, 6-0 in five to six minutes, maybe ten minutes. Because it's no, it's true. true. It's Honestly, it's a completely, really. it's a completely different sport. The men are a lot faster. They serve harder. They hit harder. It's just a different game. And I love to play women's tennis. And I, and I only want to play girls because I don't want to be embarrassed. And she's amazing. And now, you heard what she said? She blatantly and upfront herself admitted that she had no chance against a top male player. But now, why is she making the statement that she made now that, oh, well, you know, there's no facts to back up what you're saying. Why is she saying that? Because now she has to uh, stand up as, a, uh, as an ensign, as a, as a paragon for the female uh, libertarian mentality. The female, we can do whatever a man could do mentality. She's moved past the, rea the world of reality, and now she's moved into the delusional world. All right? Which is much more lucrative. Because now she has a lot more female support amongst the Caucasian women. Because remember, when Serena first started winning, she was mostly getting support from so-called black people. Uh, so-called black men and women. All right? Now, as she nears the end of her career, she's become more of a feminist icon. Then, um, you know, just as much, if not more, than what she is representative of to so-called blacks. And she understands that. And as I keep saying, liberal black women, globalist, uh, racialist, feminist, that's what she is. She has to balance everything out. And she's the best women's player I've ever seen. That's not misogynistic. That's science. You ever watch the rings competition in the Olympics? I mean, it's, it's some of the best built human beings ever. 
you know, the rings competition, they don't have that for women because of upper body limitations. It's only for men. The best javelin throw in the history of the Olympics for women is 71 meters. The boys' high school record beats it handily. That's not anti-women, it's science. Think about this. The first Olympics we ever had was in the 1800s. And the fastest man in the 200 meters was Walter Tewksbury. He ran a 22.2 200 meters. He would have run faster, of course, but he was running in a top hat. Um, it took a woman almost 100 years to beat it with obvious nutritional and weight training advantages. I.e. performance enhancing drugs, steroids. I mean, I don't even know if they had like weight training in 1800. They had weight training in 1800. It was known as uh as the strength culture, all right, or the strong man culture, all right. It, it definitely wasn't mainstream like it is now, but they had it. Weight training goes all the way back to antiquity, you know, back to the the um, Babylonians and the people of Kemet, and you know, as long as you had a civilized uh, civilization, you had people who you know who exercised for fitness and strength. This is not about criticizing, elevating. It is the reality that women's sports should be celebrated by themselves. Right, but the key word you use there is reality. Who says that everybody's dealing with reality? Some people, some people prefer lies. Some people prefer their own concocted version of, of events, of reality. It's called delusion. Right? That's how certain people are made happy. And men's sports should be celebrated by themselves. Now, there are instances, car racing uh, is one, where you have women competing against men. That's awesome. And most of the time, the women don't do very well, even in those sports. Why is that? Because driving a lot of times takes uh, hand-eye coordination, reflexes, right? Things that a lot of times women don't necessarily have as well as men. That's why women are known for being poor drivers, all right? If I see a woman drive, if I see a woman or or Asian driving, I know I got to get the hell out the way. Or well, something's about to happen. Something bad is about to happen. That's amazing. And there are certainly women's sports. Allegedly. Sports tennis for me, because the volleys are longer. I actually often prefer watching women's tennis over men's tennis. And I can tell you, until recently, the United States women's national soccer team was more captivating because they were better and more dominant against women than the men's national soccer team was. I do think now the men's team's gotten really, really captivating as well. And I think internationally we're more competitive. But whenever we get into these arguments, women and certain people get mad and men pound their chest. They're totally different sports. Women's golf and men's golf are different sports. There's women's tees, there's men's tees. I, by the way, can't hit from men's championship tees. Recently, they had a controversy in the WNBA where they wanted to lower the rims and make the ball smaller. I believe that they just made the ball smaller. But a, a couple of years ago, I believe they wanted to lower the rims also. I can't remember who it was who wanted it, who wanted it to happen. I think it was Elena Del Don. All right. Or Elena Del Dyke, whatever her name is. I can't. It's too far. I have to hit the ball 325 regularly off the tee. Now, I don't hit it off women's tees, but I don't want to hit it off the championship men's teams. We get into these arguments often. Men versus women. Right, and you know who loves those arguments the most, Colin? Liberal women. They're the ones who start them. All right? Because the intent is to try to break men down through arguing. All right? That's why, and I say this again, because I've had a couple of females try to come on certain comment boards and start arguments with me. I don't care about your opinion. All right. I don't care about your opinion when it comes to things that you're not stating facts about. All right. Everybody's welcome to comment and state their views. All right. That's what YouTube is for. That's what an open forum is for. But when you start to try to argue and use open ended, opinionated rhetoric, I don't care about that. Please don't come at me with that. Like I said before, I care about the opinion of two women, the one whose vagina I came out of and the one whose vagina I'm going into at the moment. I don't care about the rest of that, you know, all that other bullshit that y'all talking about. All right. You should be concerned with making sure that your man is pleased, happy, sexually satisfied. Keep his stomach full and his scrotum empty. 
That's your job as a woman. And not to come on my on my comment boards trying to argue with me with your vain and inane rhetoric that I don't give a shit about. All right? It is what it is. Celebrate both. We have different divisions and scholarships for both. We do. UConn offers women's scholarships to women for basketball and men's for men's basketball. And they're both unbelievable. But even this is a classic example of somebody poking, prodding, not really knowing sports, and suggesting that Serena could be top men in the world. No. I can't. Are you... Uh-oh. Here comes. Here comes. She raped me. Here she come. Let's see what she raped me got to say. Let me read what the reporter said. Okay. We're talking about male players, but there is, of course, wonderful female players, said the reporter. Let's talk about Serena. You say she is the best female player in the world in the book. McEnroe says, oh, yeah, best female player, player ever, no question. Some wouldn't qualify it. No, everybody would qualify that she's not the best player in the world. Well, the people who wouldn't qualify are the people who live in her little world, the interviewer's world, which a lot of people live in. All right. A lot of liberal black women, a lot of homosexuals, uh, a lot of liberal Caucasians who are trying to uh, push propaganda. They would promote her and push her as the greatest tennis player ever. No doubt about it. She is easily, in my opinion, the best woman now and the best woman ever. McEnroe, not trying to be a jerk, says. Uh, no, I mean, she's not the best player in the world, period. And the reporter says, yeah, the best tennis player in the world, period. You know, why say female? Well, because you have two categories. McEnroe says, well, I mean, if she played in the men's circuit, he's categorizing it, but she'd probably be about 700. He never intended to be a jerk. He wasn't there to poke it. He wrote that she's the greatest player ever. In fact, then he goes a step further to be kind and says, I think she is so strong mentally that she could beat some players. Which, whether she could or not, is a cool thing to say, and it shows that McEnroe, again, is not trying or intending to be controversial, clickbaity, jerky, or instigated. Well, you know, some of the tinfoil hats might say, well, wait a minute. He set this on June 26th. He has a book coming out. According to the numbers, <laughs> that's what this is really all about. Him and Serena are in on it to sell books. <laughs> According to the numbers. But no, he clearly was, uh, he clearly is a victim of his own honesty. And uh, that's basically all this is really about. But, you know, she's not going to jump in and say he's right because she has too much at stake financially to perpetuate the, the female goddess role that she's currently playing. The reporter, like when I worked in local sports, is just asking a question, why qualify it? Well, you qualify it because you have a men's U.S. Open and a women's U.S. Open and a women's division in Wimbledon and a men's division in Wimbledon. It's qualified by the very sports. UConn has a women's team and a men's team. They're qualifying it. John McEnroe doesn't have anything to do with qualifying it. It's qualified by legislation. The women's World Cup players get paid this much and the men's get paid this much. I don't think it's sexist that men are paid more because they simply draw more commerce. I don't think that's anti-women. In fact, I think you could make an argument that women's tennis, of all the sports, probably should be paid fairly comparably or more than men's tennis based on certain events. I agree with that. I think that uh, female tennis... And its history, uh, particularly its, its recent history, has shown that uh, the interest has been commensurate with the male tennis players. That's what people should be uh, paid on. They should be paid on, like he said, the commerce that they generate. So that's my takeaway. Intent means a lot. I don't think McEnroe tried to be a jerk. I also think that that reporter, the way that she was trying to phrase it is, if you qualify things, men and women, then a woman could never be the greatest ever. Because physically, yes, women are different than men. And what she was trying to say, I think, was she could be the greatest of all time. And if you continue to qualify it, literally, a woman could never be the greatest. And it is all relative. So if you look at her and her body of work, she could be the greatest of all time. But and I don't think I don't she... think she means it necessarily as she could beat all the other men players. It's you know relative men's tennis, women's tennis. She's the greatest of all time. 
Because there has to be a way that women can be the greatest. No, actually, there doesn't. Actually, no, there, there doesn't. Right. But, but let's analyze the quote unquote logic that she attempted to use. Basically, what she's saying is that the platform that you could try to use to state that Serena Williams is the greatest tennis player period of all time is that she has the greatest margin in between her and the second greatest female tennis player, which is all speculative. Like I said, she just recently passed the majors record. So it's not like she it's not like she's 10 majors up on the next on the next female. But, you know, for the sake of their narrative and for the sake of her example, you know, I'll play along. That's like saying, well, the greatest basketball player of all time is this kid in high school who scored 140 points in a game because that's never been done at any other level. So, you know, he hurt his knee in his senior year and he never got to get to the NBA. But just looking at how much ahead of everybody else he was in high school, he's the greatest basketball player ever. And it's not it's not fair to, to um to qualify it by saying that he was in high school when he did it, because we never know what he would have done if he made it to the NBA. You, you see how asinine that sounds? All right. You see why I say the things that I say about the difference between a man's argument when he's speaking like a man, as opposed to the um, <laughs> a lot of the, the statements that the that a lot of these females, these liberal females try to make when they try to sound smart when they're really not. And if you leave it that way, a woman could never be the greatest. Well, if again, it's qualified by events. Right now, Colin's talking slow because he's trying to not say something that'll make him sound misogynistic. Quote, unquote, misogynistic. Wimbledon has never, ever cared about that qualification. What they qualify as women group, men group. Mm -hmm. There is no race or argument. Every sporting event, there's a women's Final Four and a men's Final Four. There is no race or suggestion that physically in sports we're trying to determine all time. These are all just subjective we arguments. talk about all time. But I mean, you can make the argument. Like, let's say Cheryl Miller went eight for eight championships. In the exactly. And right now he's doing the same thing that I just did. Let's see where this goes. Chips in the WNBA. Is she greater than Michael? Her accomplishments may be greater than Michael, but she's not physically capable of doing what Michael's doing. Have you ever watched YouTube and seen 15-year-old boys dunking? But then you're qualifying it. We're just saying if you're... Didn't he just say that sports qualifies itself? You damn bleach blonde idiot. If you're looking for like the greatest athlete of all time. Accomplishments. Yes, then that could be a woman. If you're going to always qualify it to physical ability, uh, then a woman could never be the greatest. Exactly. Ding. Ding. So that means that you know what? We don't have to grade things on a curve to make you feel better about yourself. That's basically what that, what that amounts to. Well, in her questioning, my interpretation was she was qualifying it as greatest player, like physically. Mm -hmm. And I think John was like, no, she's not the greatest player physically. Like, no, what John was basically saying was that if she got on the court with a man, she would lose. That's all. He wasn't saying just physically. He wasn't saying because his skills is everything. It's not just about physically. All right. That's what he was saying. So that and that proves that these women really don't want to be equal they want to be viewed as being superior after you judge them on a curve. Like when you're a reporter, have you ever written down questions before you go into an interview? Mm -hmm. Okay, I've never written down answers when I'm being interviewed. The responsibility is on the reporter to ask the question correctly so that I am not confused as somebody answering the question. You and I write down questions. We're prepared. Mm -hmm. When a reporter creates confusion, don't blame the answerer. A, blame the questioner. The questioner shouldn't confuse the president. You prepare questions. I don't prepare answers when I go to be interviewed. Well, some people do, but I, I understand where you're going with it. But I don't think that her intent was to be as clear as possible. I believe that her intent was to try to entrap him in his words and make him confess that Serena Williams was the greatest tennis player ever and if not, to create this problem that he has right now. That is how they that is how they execute. Once again, it's Hegelian dialectic. All right. You want a pre can answer or resolution. You create the problem and you try to force the the object of your propaganda to to acquiesce. 
to submit, okay, she is the greatest ever, right? That's how it's like an infection. It's like a viral infection. You force it on people. So McEnroe, how it lands for him, if he's confused, that's on the reporter. That's not on McEnroe. So, I mean, we can play the Mac and Roll sound again. I never believe for a second his intent no. is to be... Let me just play it again. He's not trying to be... A, intent means a lot. People make mistakes in life. It'd be one thing if he was out there clickbaiting and trying... Listen again. He's not trying to be a jerk. Let's talk about Serena Williams. You say she is the best female player in the world, in the book. Best female player ever. No question. Uh, some wouldn't qualify it. Uh, some would say she's the best player in the world. Why qualify it? Oh, oh, she's not, you mean the best player in the world, period? Yeah, best tennis player in the world. You know, why, why say female player? Well, because if she was a, if she played the men's circuit, she'd be like 700 in the world. By the way, she's not a sports reporter. She covered the Middle East. She's a fine reporter, I imagine. But again, like on the news desk, when she asked that question, my takeaway is, you're saying she's the best, the word is player. Not accomplishments, not resume. If I said, who's a better player, Lonzo Ball or Markel Fultz? My guess would be the better player will be Lonzo Ball. Like the word is player. That's a basketball player. A f right, but Kyle, you also have to understand the mindset behind the liberal, uh, the liberal female, the liberal feminist. They want to eradicate all distinction and division between them and men because they want to be men. All right. That's why they no longer want to be called actresses. They want to be called actors. Right. I no longer want to have a division between how I'm um, between the nomenclature used for what I do as opposed to what a male actor does, because we both do the same thing. All right. Notice they never say, well, how come he can't be called an actress, too? They want to come over to the man's side. You understand? Because they want to be men. That's all it is with feminists. They want to be men. They want to do and get away with the same things that they allege men have, quote unquote, gotten away with. A football player, reporter, player. Well, that's fine. But then he didn't need to say, oh, she wouldn't have beat the best 700th best player. Why did he need to say that if it's what the truth is? See, that's really what her issue is. Her issue is, is once again, as most of these liberal females issues are, not not even that Serena wasn't as good as the number one man's player, but that she wouldn't even rank. That's what's hurting them. I think it's that, closer to a thousand. But, okay, you know. but that he, there was no reason for him to do that. That that was where it kind of went. Okay, now you're. It didn't bother me at all. That bother you? Yeah. Of course it bothered her because she has low self esteem. I've already stated that explicitly on previous videos. I stated that before she got into that issue with Levar Ball. I stated that she had mental problems, as all so called liberal feminist women do. They all have self esteem issues. They all have self image issues. They all go home and pop antidepressant pills they all go home and drink wine straight <laughs> straight to the head right they all go to the bar and the club on friday saturday night looking for different dudes to plow them out to make them feel less worthless they all have the same problems because even if it's true it's like why why say that and that makes me kind of err on the side of he wasn't being too kind there it's not his job to be kind it's his job to, to be truthful and the truth hurts you know, like when you asked LeVar Ball how many shoes he sold, were you trying to be kind? There. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. If he would have just said, you know, physically men's players will beat women's players, like that makes sense. But say, oh, she wouldn't beat the 700th player. And if he would have said physically men beat women, you still would have had a problem with that. You still would have had a problem with that. You would have said, why does he need to say that for? You should have just left it at, she's, she, no, she's a great player. All right? Once again, the main tactic of the female liberal movement is to try to wear you down through arguing even with a lot of you brothers that are in relationships with these women one of the main reasons why they try to start arguments where there, where no argument exists is to try to wear you down to try to break you down and subjugate you and uh, once they've accomplished that mission then they move on to the next target it's like a uh, a virus jumping from host to host all right that is the mentality of the liberal feminist woman please keep that in mind I, prob necessary. I probably would have said, it when she said, well, why qualify it? I, I would have said. That's what I just said. Why qualify it? Uh, and, and, and if somebody said that, I would say, well, what are you asking me? If men played women, I would just, because I would be confused by the question, so I would just ask for clarity. I would say, do you mean if, if she played on the men's tour, how would she do? I would have made the reporter re-ask the question. Sure. 
instead of answering it, because I, when I get interviewed, and I don't that often, but when I do get interviewed, if I'm confused, I always say, well, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I want to make you ask the question again, because I don't want to be misinterpreted or misquoted. So when she asked the question, I would have, if I, and again, it's easy for me to say now that I listened to it, but I would have said McEnroe, well, I, what, what do you mean? Are you saying she could play Roger Federer and win? He serves 160. Women serve at the highest level ever, 134, I think is the record. That wouldn't, that's not the same game. And again, Serena initially went on Letterman and acknowledged, yeah, it's a different game. Men's and women's golf is a different sport. Women's basketball tends to be more linear. Men's basketball tends to be more explosive and vertical. They're two different sports. Some people prefer the women's game. And again, I think women's tennis is one of the sports where I, just eyeballs, I find women's tennis often as or more captivating than men's tennis. I do also. I remember being a child watching um, that old school dyke, Navratilova, play against Steffi Graf. I remember watching Steffi Graf play against Monica Seles. I remember Jennifer Capriati. I remember a lot of them chicks, man. Martina Hingis. No. The women's tennis is a very enjoyable sport. Just don't compare it to men's tennis. And even in soccer, the United States women's national team, until recently, I found was every bit as good a watch as the men. I think Klinsman's teams tended to be defensive-minded and boring, and the United States women's national team tended to be aggressive and attacking. And until recently, with Bruce Arena now on, the women's national team was more captivating than the men's national team because of the style of play and their aggressive nature. Uh, good. But anyway, that pretty much is it on the Serena Williams thing. I'm sure that there's going to be some more issues that pop up around her as they continue to try to escalate her and elevate her into goddess status, which she has attained for the most part already. But uh, after the child is born, it's going to be interesting to see how they portray the child and uh, where her career goes from here. But she is definitely she's Teflon. Anybody who tries to touch her, they're going to be they're going to be ran through the mill. There's no doubt about that. All right. So peace.